Here we are going to look at an example of where Laplace transforms are used. And we've got a circuit, and we'd like to know whether this circuit is stable. So we've got a design, and we're going to be designing resistor, inductor, and capacitor. And we'd like to make sure that it's a stable circuit. And we can use Laplace transforms for this. So what we're going to start with doing is write down an equation for this circuit. Uh, and we're going to do a voltage loop, so XT is the input voltage. And we've got a, the current is then going to go through the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. And we can write down an equation for this. The current, we know the current through the, the, the capacitor is C times the derivative of the voltage. And that tells us the current. So that's the current through all of them, of course. Uh, so the, that current times the resistance, so R times C times dy dt is the voltage drop across the resistor. And then the voltage drop across an inductor is L times the change in the current. So that gives another derivative. And we have this equation uh, here. So this is uh, R times C. That's the voltage drop across the resistor. That's uh, C dy dt. That's the current. Uh, and then you've got the current, the derivative of the current. So this is dy uh, d squared y to t squared times c, that's the derivative of the current, times L, so that's the voltage drop across the inductor, plus the voltage drop across the capacitor, and that equals the total voltage drop. So now we can uh, take the Laplace transforms of each of these terms. So we've got Laplace transform of xt is xs, we've got rc times s times ys, because the Laplace transform of a derivative is S times the Laplace transform of the function itself, plus LC, and this will have S squared times YS, plus, of course, just YS. And now if we collect all the terms that are Y onto uh, one side and divide by the XS terms, we get the system function. So YS divided by XS. Uh, equals, and we can divide by LC, uh, I'll just uh, do that to make it a um, in a form that is gives S squared on its own. So we've got on the bottom, so S squared plus R divided by L times S plus 1 divided by LC. So you, you can see the steps we've done there. Okay, so here's our system function and we would like to, which is the Laplace transform, uh, use the Laplace transforms and we still would like to know if this is stable. Uh, so this is the Laplace transform and to find out if it's stable we need to find if the region of convergence includes the vertical axis. That means it would have a Fourier transform uh, and uh, therefore it's going to be stable. So let's, to do that, let's pick an example. I'm just going to pick, uh, so we could do it in general, but it gets a little bit messy. Let's pick an example. Uh, let's say the resistance equals 1 ohm, uh, the inductance equals 0.2 uh, henrys, and the capacitance equals 0.5 farads. Let's say we, we plug those numbers into here. Uh, then for that example, we have HS equals 1 divided by 0.2 times 0.5, which is... 1 divided by 0.1, which is 10. 10 divided by s squared plus 5s plus 10. So for this example, we'd like to know if it's a stable function, a stable system. Well, this is now in a form that you see lots of practice examples about Laplace transforms. We can rewrite this as a divided by uh, s. Or we can write this, and let me write this step in between. We can write this collecting the squares on the bottom, s plus 2 and times s plus 5. Okay, so we've got these two terms on the bottom and now we could separate out those two terms, a divided by s plus 2 plus b divided by s plus 5. And now we can solve for a and b uh, because a times s plus 5 plus b times s plus 2 that's the numerator, has to equal 10. And uh, you can solve then for a and b uh, because 10 is a real number 
and A and B could be complex. Um, and they, those complex numbers have to equal this number 10, which is real. So you've got two equations there and two unknowns because you've got a real part and an imaginary part. So you can solve for A and B. Uh, I'm not actually going to do that here, but what I'm going to do is uh, show you that it's going to be stable. So if, we, if you've solved for A and you've solved for B, then you'll find out that you can uh, take the inverse Laplace transform of this and the inverse Laplace transform of that. Uh, but only for certain values of S uh, which match the real system. So what, one thing we know is that our circuit is a real circuit. So our system function is going to be causal. And something we know about Laplace transforms is that for a causal system, for a, a real system and a system that's causal, the region of convergence has to be a right-hand half plane. That's a property of Laplace transforms. So here, this inversion here, we can see that there's going to be a pole at s equals minus 2. So that's a real number. So this is on this axis, so it equals minus 2. And another pole at s equals minus 5. Uh, that's where the two poles are. And so a region of convergence which is a right-hand half plane, the region of convergence needs to hold for both of these. So for this one we would have to the right of minus 2 and for this one to the right of minus 5 and the overlapping region where they both have to hold if we're going to take the inverse is this region here. So let me just say again we know it's a causal system because it's a real system so you cannot, it can't respond before you put the input in so it's causal. That means from a property of Laplace transforms that the region of convergence is a right-hand half plane. We know from these two terms that the inverse Laplace transforms are going to be only holding for uh, regions which are one side or the other of the pole, and so they have to hold for both of these for this overall transfer function, so it has to be to the right-hand side of minus 2. So this is the region of convergence, and now we can confirm the region of convergence includes the J omega axis, which means it has a Fourier transform, which means it is a stable system. And as an engineer, you could use this process here, picking different values of R, L and C, and testing to see whether you have a stable system. And of course, you'd want to pick values of R, L and C which are stable. In this case, for this example, as long as they're all positive, it turns out you can show that it is stable for all positive values of those. Um, but you still might be wanting to know how stable, and that tells you where these placement of these poles are. So you can pick values of R, L and C which are further to the left or further to the right uh, to achieve the degree of stability that you are aiming for in your engineering design. So this is a pretty uh, important and fundamental application of Laplace transforms.